Wo ist sie jetzt? Think about how it could be a new mindset has arrived, where to share has become our greatest power. It is this energy that guides us and enlightens us, where meaning and purpose is a plane. Burn inside every soul on the planet. Welcome to the human to human model, uniting and inspiring to build together with meaningfulness and joy. Opening new possibilities for people. Anticipating disruption. Rethinking society. Who will reach their potential because the teacher is today? Join us. Today is sustainable plus 112. And I think right now is clearly the way to act. Lack of clean energy will affect the Earth's core later. I find that when people begin making small changes, they gradually get bigger because they get this feeling, I am doing something. So we moved from greed-based civilization to human value-based civilization. Making money is a happiness. Making other people happy is a super happiness. Wondering about your future? So bring your DNA plus today. When you are a dreamer, when you are a dreamer, of course you have your vision, but there are moments that sometimes maybe you stop believing in this vision, especially in the moments of uh, some problems or a failure. So, could you tell me, and could you tell also to thousands of people who maybe will be motivated by your answer, what keeps you fighting for your vision? What helps you to reach your dream? Well, I mean, I, I think I'm kind of constitutionally just here to, to just keep going. I don't know. Um, it's, uh, um, yeah, I mean, it just, I, I, I don't know. I mean, it, it, it certainly, it, there are times when, you know, things don't go well, and then uh, that's quite dispiriting, for sure. Um, and so then it's, it's difficult to proceed with the same level of enthusiasm. Um, but... Um, but I do think like, I do think the things that we're doing are, are, you know, pretty important to the future. Um, and if we don't succeed, then, you know, there's, well, there's, there's not, it's not clear what other things would succeed. Um, and if, if we don't succeed, then we'll be suddenly pointed to as a reason why people shouldn't even try for these things. So, uh, I think it's important that we do whatever is necessary to keep going. So thank you, and I wish you that your next Thursday is very successful. Thanks. Thank you so much. We still here? <laughs> so, yes, we are all still okay. here and we are waiting for you to begin. <laughs> because my computer is also, after the whole day, you know, it's now. <laughs> it's tired. <laughs> yes, yes. yes so, so I think that, uh, you see, when we organized our first call, uh, at the moment when everybody was so disrupted, yes, and uh, we, don't, we didn't know what to do, yes. So I said to myself, okay, first let's start uh, uniting us again, yes. We cannot meet uh, live, so at least uh, let's make something fun, yes. And we had this first hour in party. And then uh, we are here together today. And uh, what is uh, very important in all the activities that we are doing is that uh, we 
would like to involve as much as possible women in our actions because they are much more efficient than men. <laughs> 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 no, but uh, but uh, I would like to really thank to our women who are in the FinTech Business Club because without them, we would not be able to organize what we are organizing. And uh, I think that uh, uh, as we discussed before, we don't need to prove uh, who is that women are equal or not equal. We are just equal, yes? So there is no discussion yes, on this topic. Uh, just, you see, how we should work together you know, in order to help more women to bring to our industry, yes? So Rashi, I give you the floor because you are chair, chairwoman <laughs> of the session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. Um, I would just start with the introduction of all my esteemed panelists here. Let's start with uh, uh, with uh, with uh, Madam Dr. Middleton. She has an extensive experience of about 50 years advancing the renewable energy transformation through her work in the International Solar Energy Society and the US section ASES where she currently serves on the board of directors. She has worked to create a better world using all her expertise in air quality and climate change. She has a PhD in atmospheric chemistry from the University of Texas and has led leadership and executive positions at National Center of Atmospheric Research, Atmospheric Science Research Centers at State of University of New York, uh, Science and Policy Associates, uh, INC. Uh, in addition to all this um, work, she has she uh, has ongoing activities at Global Emissions Initiative, and uh, she's a coordinator uh, and the Energy Environment Advisor through diverse organizations through a company called pa Paranoma Pathways. Welcome, madam. It's a pleasure to have you today here with us. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be with all of you and all of you who I cannot see on the screen that are listening in. Okay, you can go into the speaker view mode and you will be able to see all of them together. Ah, wonderful. Yes. And uh, next, I would like to introduce uh, Mr. Gaurav Mehta from Dharma Life. As a founder of Dharma Life Foundation and managing director of its profit identity, Gajam India Private Limited, Mr. Gaurav Mehta leads the team of Dharma Life from the front. It is indeed Mr. Mehta's vision of inclusive progress for the rural India that percolates through the entire organization. He handles the crucial task of ensuring the self-sufficiency of Dharma life through its commercial entity, Gajam India Private Limited. And I, I have been with, as a panelist with the, in one of the sessions with Mr. Gaurav Mehta, and I can tell you his work is fantastic. And we would love to hear from him in a short while. Welcome to the panel, sir. Great to be here. Thank you, Rashi. Uh, next, I'd introduce uh, one of my dear friends, Kelly. Kelly takes up the country management role for India for a renewable energy focused company in Europe, based in Europe called 3E, with headquarters in Belgium. <clears throat> the focus of our activities is market and business development of the software platform for the portfolio management of solar farms dubbed the synaptic. A master's in bioscience engineering with a decade of experience in the field of sustainability under a belt, Kelly acts as a liaison between India and her company management in back in Belgium. She is extremely passionate about building more sustainable planet and has personally involved in rural electrification projects in India. She has done a fantastic project by lighting up a school in uh, outskirts of Hyderabad in uh, Tela, uh, Hyderabad, 180 kilometers from Hyderabad. And it's a fantastic project. And Kelly, you have to tell us about that as well on the panel. Welcome here. Thank you very much. Nice to be here. Yeah. I would now introduce our new friend, Charlie. He is the co-founder of Solar Africa, Green uh, Africa. It is called Saga. Uh, a network organization that promotes right to energy and implementation of the sustainable uh, goal uh, of uh, goal number seven in Africa. He advocates for universal access to affordable energy for all by calling the governments to invest in green and clean energy sources such as solar, wind and thermal. Saga is a representative of Dr. Gopal Energy Foundation in Africa 
and it supports the work through sens towards sensitizing, educating, and training the youth and the women to enjoy the benefits of renewables for employment. A fantastic work uh, that he is doing, which is creating a mix of green entrepreneurs in Africa and, and bringing the solutions to energy for all in a cheap and an efficient way. Welcome, sir, to the panel. Thank you, Rashid. Thank you. Next, I'd in, uh, introduce another good friend of mine, Starlene Sharma. She is the founder of Soon to Launch Green Earth, uh, an investment fund and consultancy structured uh, to catalyze the commercial success of climate innovation in India. She is uh, also the founder of Clean Tech Women's Innovation Network, climate uh, editor for the Business India, and a mentor for Climate Launchpad. Climate Collective and Power Accelerator. She also has a tremendous um, work that she has done for development of startups in India, Scale the Orphans International for a Better Future International in seven countries. She has received numerous awards from UNDP and several other national or the government organizations. Stalin has completed her MPA from New York University and is an MBA from the SDA Business School in Barcelona. Welcome, Stalin. Thank you, Rashi. Next, uh, <laughs> thank you. Next, I see is Dr. Uh, Professor I.K. Weber. Now, I.K. needs no introduction for any one of us, but still, I.K. is uh, serving as an acting chair of the European Solar Manufacturing Council since May 2019. From 2015 to 2019, he was the vice president of International Solar Energy Society. He has been a director and CEO of the Berkeley Education Alliance for Research in Singapore. He has served as founding president of the German Energy Storage Association and is a member of German Academy of Science and Engineering. I have cut it short because, I mean, I can go on pages and pages for IK, but... I am time is a little short. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank much for you, being here. Raj. Very kind of you. <laughs> Very kind Another... to be brief. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Next is um, one of our very active members of the clean tech business and a very, very supporting hand in the entire e convention uh, is Simei. Simei has an experience in solar and renewable energy fields and has worked in China, Turkey, and mostly focused on international and commercial activities, including marketing, sales, business development in companies called as Eco Renewable Energy, Goodwe Solar, Tailson Solar, Season Eurasia, Snyder Electric, uh, Lucida Solar. She is also an IEEE member and a recognized volunteer since 2007. She graduated from Middle East Technical University, Anarka, Turkey with Bachelors of Science and Sociology degree. She also has received various prestigious awards and from IEEE and is recognized globally. Sime is also active in other organizations like METU Alumni Association. She's a member of Turkish Sailing Federation and she's a licensed sailor athlete, licensed of external relations in North America. And she's also a member of International Solar Energies Association. That's quite commendable, Sime. <laughs> quite a lot of work. <laughs> Welcome to the panel. Pleasure After being this, here. <laughs> thank you. After this, I have uh, the mentor for Indian women, I can call him as Pranav Mehta. He is an Indian outstanding technocrat in the renewable energy sector who is the former chairman of the Global Solar Council, consisting of 35 countries, which was former, formed during the COP21 at Paris. He has made outstanding contributions in placing India amongst the top five solar countries. A national scholar throughout his academic career, he has an overall industry experience of 48 years, mainly in the area of concept to commissioning of state of art on high technology projects in steel, petroleum, natural gas and solar sector with an emphasis on sustainable development. He is also the founder chairman of National Solar Energy Federation of India, a passionate global solar leader and environmentalist. Welcome, sir, to the panel. I'd like now to introduce uh, Dr. Zineb. She is the founder and uh, managing director of uh, 
renew energy which is offering consultancy services in areas of renewable energy including downstream and upstream pv solar sectors like photovoltaic panel manufacturing solar plants floating pv bvip pv agriculture etc dr zineb has 20 years of experience in business management operations and r and d uh, in the semiconductor and solar industries she is has an established more than 40 15 gigawatts of pv production projects in more than 20 countries welcome zinev thank you i'd i'd like to now introduce giani your delight uh giani is a chairman of the global solar council and uh, who has been elected in 2020 and is the founding member and representing Italia Solare as the vice president and head of international affairs he is the director at greening the islands and the ceo at the green consulting group he has a degree in mechanical uh, and management engineering and masters at the midlex uh, university london kellogg school of management chicago and uh, bocconi milano milan and one institute in madrid oh my god i mean he is also having a very impressive background and he's a fantastic person i had a, i have had some short interactions with him and uh, it has been lovely to have him here thank you so much for being with us so with this august and fantastic panel that i have today with me charlie we cannot see you muted uh, rashi but we have also solar mama Oh yes, my mama. <laughs> oh, I so I'm so sorry I missed you on the screen. My mama is so important. I mean, I always call her mama, but her name is Mary O'Donnell, and you should know that she is an expert in the solar and the wind industry, and she is the youngest member of our clean tech business club. The energy <laughs> and the excitement that Solar Mama brings to the platform is unmatched. It's absolutely unmatched. And we also have uh, one other guest uh, who was joining us for the uh, convergence of disruption panel, Jamie from Australia. Uh, uh, Jamie, uh, Gemma, Gemma, Gemma Green. So maybe you can Hi. present yourself. Welcome, Gemma. Because we are new in the family, so. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm, my name is Gemma Green. I'm um, based in Perth, Western Australia. I'm a co-founder and the executive chairman of a technology company called Power Ledger. and we use the blockchain to facilitate trading of electricity and renewable energy certificates and we are four years old and we have projects in uh, nine countries very nice welcome jemma thanks for having me okay so as we all know that the world is now closed for renovation under covid-19 so we need to now understand that we all have been talking about women empowerment so the most effective way i think to do it is just to do it so let's just start empowering all ourselves first so that we can empower everyone around us so now let's open to the thought leaders and uh, the first question that i would put up is what has the pandemic revealed to us about women empowerment let's start with my solar mama i what do you, i didn't understand what was the question again say it what okay. did you say i said what has the pandemic of covid-19 revealed to us about women empowerment well i think that it's like any opportunity for women when uh when you run out of bread there's always the opportunity to make your own from scratch and if you've never done it before it's a nice time to try so for me there's a lot of people were in home but it's been giving me the time to go after my unfortunate in a way bad solar disruptor and i wired the money today to buy the first model of this new uh clean technology that's a base load So and I'm been on the phone I got it I I didn't get it sold I found a home for it it's going to be in a in a building that I have a condo in in Boston so it's only a half a megawatt but uh I 
because of there's no transmission distribution and all the other charges that the utilities charge all of that goes away so just without those those points it's more than 40 percent that they have a savings so i'm very excited about this and the beauty of uh, well as bad as it is everybody's home so if you stay on them long enough you can get them because they can't get away from you <laughs> they're not driving they're not commuting so i think as women we're used to making things out of nothing or being very creative. So it, this is a serious opportunity to create things where there was nothing before or to take whatever you have and make the most with it. You know, you can't go spend your money at Starbucks. Well, guess what? Pull out all those old coffee makers and go back to doing it yourself. And what's wrong with that? So, uh, and I've, Part of what I do under the turbines is we have a, a, a bit of a farm. So instead of them doing other things, I've got everybody farming. <laughs> so today they delivered to me some most incredible greens. So I think it's just seizing opportunities and they're there, they're everywhere. And somebody told me yesterday that I'm discriminatory because I only hire women. Okay, so spank me, hit me, punish me. Uh, how about all the days when you couldn't get a job because you were a girl? Okay, so now that's what it is. When I started, I used to wear pink work boots and a pink uh, construction hat and so that they wouldn't forget me. Not that they were going to forget me anyway because I was on their job sites, but I, it was making a point. So I think those are the kind of things that we as women... Uh, I think by nature with that we do. And I think that men that are real men and are comfortable with being men are not the least bit intimidated us. They all still know it's a man's world. Let's not kid ourselves. And in our lifetime, it, that will never change. However, I do see that there's a lot more sharing. And I think that it's not to fight men, it's to use men to help us uh, succeed because they want the help you know they've all had mothers they all have sisters they you know we're not the enemy and they get that so I think a lot of it it's up to us to realize common sense they're not you know you're always going to make it meet a jerk there's many jerky women so forget about that and go for what makes sense and I think dur during these kind of times Look for the low-hanging fruit because it's still there. Okay, and I'll keep quiet. I have a tendency to chit-chat too much. <laughs> so I'll be quiet now. Okay, let's move to Mr. Me Pranav Mehta. Your comments, so, sir, please. Yes. Uh, you see, whenever nature wants to create something new, there are pangs associated with it. After the pangs, the new creation, the beautiful new creation comes. And in such a situation, it is always women uh, who can do the best job. That is when new creation is uh, to be there. And I'm sure that this COVID situation uh, will bring in a new order, a new way of thinking. And all the uh, empowered and uh, beautiful women uh, uh, will play uh, their own role. And of course, we will be there to support always. Okay. Let's go to Dr. Middleton. Oh, thank you. Uh, well, what has the, what has the, the pandemic revealed? Um, as an overview, I think it's really, really revealed that we can, as an earth, as a human, you know, as humanity, we can work together. Just boom, all of a sudden, everybody is working together. It's also uh, begun to show us something about, or reminding us about how when we are working together, men, women, different cultures, such as revealed here on the screen and then throughout this whole week of the E Convention, People working together actually are much more effective. When you have diversity of minds coming together, 
you get there faster. The actions are easier and swifter. So this is kind of what we're seeing uh, really underscored uh, by the pandemic. In terms of women in particular, it's, it's, it's interesting. The pandemic has certainly spotlighted the fact that uh, women are in the frontline positions, They're the majority of people on the front line uh, that are considered essential workers are women. So they're, they're, we women are uh, in more the position of harm's way, so to speak. It's also, also we have to see the negative side that there's been a rise in domestic violence, for example. So the problems of, of women's oppression has not gone away entirely, and we need to always remember this. But uh, another very interesting thing that has been illuminated by the pandemic is women leadership around the world. Uh, countries where we have strong female leadership have acted very quickly, very decisively. Key examples, of course, are in Germany and New Zealand. So it kind of reminds us that, yes, women see a problem often and they just go and take care of it. Uh, unlike, let's say, in the United States, where, well, <laughs> need I say any more? <laughs> no. no, no, no politics, no politics. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, I, I want to hear from others, too. <laughs> yes, thank you. Let's jump on to Charlita. What are your views on this? Uh, thank you for, for taking me in. And um, my first view is that I have two sides. I'm two-sided when I, when I look at what happened with the COVID-19. The first thing is that I think this, we've got a very serious reveal here that women are very, very much important in our, in our society. Given the fact that they are the one, you know, most devoted to care. And we've seen that clearly in hospitals, in taking care of, of kids at home for classroom and all those essential services. And we have seen it very clearly. But my, my, what make me sad, and this is the second side of what I've seen, is that these essential services are, you know, low grade, low value, low paid jobs. And this is something that makes me very sad. And when you look at most of the countries that where you've got restrictions and confinement, you will see clearly that those who are the most impacted, especially in Africa, where most services, most economic activities are informal, you will see that most of the people most of the people that are impacted the most dramatically are women. And that's something that makes me very, very sad. And I think it is a new, a new sight, a new vision that we need to transform our society and to change the paradigm of the way we organize this society. That's the first thing I could say. All right, let's now go to Kelly. Yes. Um, well, I think uh, in this time of COVID, everything around us is, is very unstable. Um, and I think that leadership and direction is, is now very important and that you also, you know, form a coherent team, you know, because of COVID, we are here now together, you know, to take leadership on, on how we will move on. Um, and uh, I think it's important that um, Things are unstable, but don't be afraid of that. There's a lot of fear, but put you above the fear and see about the opportunity uh, that it offers you. Uh, but I think it's also very important um, to, to listen to the fear, to you know the people who work for you, uh, your customers. I think as women, we are good listeners. Um, and I think in these times, uh, the context that people work in uh, it's important uh, that you listen to that um, and that fe people feel, you know, feel, trust feel trusted and that they feel like you work uh, like a coherent team, even if you're remote. So I think, uh, you know, 
taking leadership, going above the fear um, and uh, don't be afraid, but be somebody people can trust on. Uh, I think that is something we have to yeah, move in that direction. And as women, uh, we are able to do that with the support of good men, of course. Okay. Uh, let's now jump into Mr. Gaurav Mehta. What do you have to say about this? And one more thing that I will add on to you is, uh, uh, please also highlight about how uh, into this lockdown situation in India, your um, dharma life and the rural electrification through women is taking place right now. So these are two questions that I'll put to you. Thank you, Rashi. So I think I'll give, I'll answer this question from the perspective of our Women Entrepreneur Network in rural India. So I think what we've seen uh, our women entrepreneurs do is they actually have taken leadership. Uh, I mean, they've led from the front. I think um, similar to other health worker networks, I think for us, um, our women entrepreneurs have started working on, you know, actually identifying uh, the issues on the ground, you know, giving them back to us and other channels helping on kind of behavior change communication on, you know, how do we prevent COVID, some of the messages the WHO has given out. So we've actually asked the women to disseminate them on WhatsApp, obviously honoring social distancing rules, or in cases where we got permissions for them to move around, um, they have gone out uh, and delivered essential products. So I think from our perspective, the women in the households in rural India where we work have taken a leadership role. There are issues, obviously, uh, you know, within the, the, the answer that was mentioned, the, the, you know, kind of the changing kind of guidance from, uh, from even governments and uh, WHO in terms of how do you prevent uh, and not be at risk. Uh, so that, that has been a challenge. The other thing they did is also mass production. Uh, but again, lots of things actually to help the community. So what we try to do uh, with them is, I mean, it's not been us actually, Rashi. It's been the women themselves, you know, they were already kind of taking leadership roles. So I think um, that's been a great positive here where we have um, got, I mean, women have taken the leadership role. And um, yeah, in terms of your question on the energy front, um, yeah, I mean, solar was not an essential good, as you know. So, I mean, unfortunately, we could not continue the solar dissemination programs but um, in India. Uh, but at the same time, um, we will continue that post lockdown. And it still remains an, uh, essential, obviously, for us to uh, take forward. Great. Uh, we now move into Sime. Thank you. So actually, um, for for during the pandemic um, situation, like in the first couple of days or not even a week, like we probably just like stop and start thinking about. We were silent in the first couple of days to understand what's happening. But you know, like as we, um, you know, like not in the clean tech industry, but like a women and men together who really contribute and care the future and the earth, uh, start thinking about uh, what I can do and to contribute more in this situation. So this is actually, uh, this crisis is actually and also an opportunity for us who really cares the future to think uh, uh, intensively and do more for the, for the earth. So, um, so like in the industry, like industry uh, peers, like um, we just start quick actions uh, in the field that if we have the initiative, like, you know, it was even impressive that how we organized everything um, together for this conference, right? So like in short period of time. So like uh, it was actually a short inner journey for us just to think what we can do more and where we have the initiative, we just like, move forward in that direction. This is actually a good example that what women and men as we human can do together during this crisis uh, situation. So um, still this is an opportunity to show us um, what we can do more uh, in the field that we ha have these initiatives. As like, it was a good example that women leaders, of course, like the countries who have the initiative and good leaders uh, who have the initiative, they took quick actions. But it's not about just the country leadership, it's also the, all the, it's also opportunity for all the people who has the initiative in their field. Uh, because if we contribute to our field, if we can do uh, some something new or just like bring new ideas, uh, solutions, uh, we will just like uh, deal with the, every problem together so this is this showed us the importance 
uh, of our contribution to the world. Okay, now we move to Aiki. Oh, thank you, Rashi. I would like to pick up where Paulette left, you know, we all know that Trump got elected by Maine. If the woman would have uh, been the electorate, he would not have a chance. And if I just for fantasy imagine Hillary would be our president in the United States right now, the world would look very, very different. I'm quite convinced. And unfortunately, a few thousand people in the US might not have died. So we will we never know. But uh, altogether, we can say really for any organization, it seems to be very, very beneficial uh, empowering women because women bring a different attitude, a different approach to business, to negotiations. And I guess in some situations, even it is good to have male, female teams, you know, like good cop, bad cop, or however you can do that because this can give you the biggest advantage. And of course, we all admire women in leading roles. You know, my best example is, of course, Greta Thunberg. I don't know if a young man would have achieved this type of persistence, this type of uh, uh, effect at the end of the day as this young girl, you know, because she looked very vulnerable. Everybody listened to her, but her message was stronger than the message of any of the men around her. So I, I think uh, women, uh, women can play a much more important role in the whole process of uh, pushing forward the transformation of our world to a sustainable world, to, to fight the climate problem. Uh, I have not seen besides Greta too many, I mean, of course, not anybody like uh, Sola Mama here, but <laughs> I have not seen, you know, many of the climate scientists are male, many of the people speaking up are male. We need more empowerment of women uh, for our good cause in the climate issue because I think it is good for our movement and it's of course uh, really good uh, for the effect of the world. So let's all work on that, having more empowerment of women because they really bring so important and powerful messages to the table. Thank you. Now let's go to Stalin. What are your opinions? Well, we'll start off with building a little bit on some of Pauline's comments. Stalin, you're not audible. Am I audible now? A little, uh, a little better. better. A little better. Uh, so I'll start by building on some of Paulette's comments. Uh, you know, we certainly are seeing that uh, this is disproportionately affecting women, in part because you know, women still do a lot more of the care work. And we're seeing that in India, in the entrepreneurial ecosystem, for example, um, I've seen a lot of funders encourage women to think about pivoting to look at it or, or spend their time on COVID-related problems, whereas they've not done that with the male entrepreneurs in their portfolio that are working on the same types of problems. Uh, but similarly, like we've seen women take up great leadership in crisis at the country level, uh, we've also seen that the women entrepreneurs are taking up greater leadership within their own companies uh, and, and using this time to really invest in planning for their future, which I think is you know, really a demonstration of the resourcefulness that women bring when they start businesses. Um, and then the final thing that I'd like to just bring up is a point of, of, of women's empowerment um, and COVID and one of the risks that I think that we're really going to have to worry about is as we see by the lockdowns resulting in large-scale uh, economic issues or economic uh, recessions around the world, uh, you know, that very largely, the unemployment very largely is typically born more so by women um, and, and because they are the caretakers and because of them tend to re return to the workforce much sooner. Um, so as we think about women's empowerment and the role of women in the clean tech ecosystem, climate and energy ecosystem, I think it's really important that we think about uh, developing policies either at the company level or the country level where we really are cognizant of making sure that we keep women involved and, and keep gender uh, as
emerging lens that we're looking at as we think about how we move forward. Awesome. So now let's go to Giani. Oh, you have to unmute. You have to unmute, you're on mute. Okay, thank you Rashi for giving me the floor. And this is uh, of course a great opportunity. It's uh, very important, uh, Thomas, anyway, also to talk about uh, this, uh, this important topic. Uh, I have to say that COVID-19 is uh, um, an opportunity of, uh, for a big change, for a restart, uh, for a break, uh, breakthrough. Uh, and uh, in many aspects, and this could be a very important. I cannot believe that we supporting the environment is uh, is not supporting uh, is supporting discrimination, and uh, and this is a, an opportunity to demonstrate that uh, really we need to make the change. Uh, um, Thirty-two percent of um, uh, workers in the renewables, according to Arena, are women. But of course, are not um, anyway. Uh, this uh, this percentage is very different uh, in, from country to country. So that is the main problem. So, but um, I think a key point is uh, to give to women the same access to uh, education, which is a starting point. Because if uh, uh, women have not the same access to education, is is difficult then anyway when you go to leadership position the number of women are less candidates are less than the men. So, so first point, the access to education. Digitalization, which is a, a, a key um, a change, uh, a driver anyway, uh, will be a driver after, uh, with it, during and after COVID-19, will be an opportunity for social education also for, 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 um, for women uh, that maybe has uh, anyway some uh, particular situation uh, managing the family also at home so so is a, is an opportunity um, uh, women are a, a value because means diversify the talent in a company so it's very very important so on my view um, uh, this is uh, coming back to your question rashi uh, covid 19 is an opportunity of a, a restart and anyway a restart you know in, a, in, a, in the proper way um, and uh, I'd like to uh, underline that uh, is uh, we need to start from education. And then, of course, this will help a lot to have very good candidates at leadership position. Awesome. I would now request uh, Zainab uh, to say some words on this, as well as inform everyone that Zainab has to leave the panel in the next 10 minutes. So. Then have the floor is yours. Yes, thank you very much, Rashi. Um, uh, so I have maybe to highlight two points here. Uh, so I'm saying like um, uh, women are already taking part of several global initiatives, project and organization in the serving the renewable energy market and businesses. So, uh, so the, the importance of, of their contribution is, is growing each day and in all places um, and in the world. Uh, in the world, uh, in the, the whole world. So, uh, especially in the development countries and in like uh, Asia and Africa. So my point of view is that to promote and foster women, I'm, I'm joining uh, Janchi in, in uh, you know, in the, the concept or the idea to give women more access to education. Uh, I would say also to add to this, uh, empowering, uh, to give them a kind of empowering mechanisms like financial, social instruments, um, like, uh, you know, in terms of founding of women business and startups, um, uh, providing more training, more education uh, in the renewable energy, uh, clean tech uh, sectors. So um, this is, I'm very optimized that in the next coming days, weeks and months, one more uh, women empower empowerment will be more, uh, more maximized. Uh, because we already have seen uh, the capabilities and the skills of women uh, uh, in, in different in different sectors and in different uh, businesses. So what is what is very um, positive? What it came out positive uh, during this uh, pandemic situation. Uh, so I have seen women uh, coming up with inno innovative ideas and concepts to, for instance, to uh, to react to the lack of masks 
or uh, uh, of overalls to support the medical staff. So they really come up with uh, with uh, with innovatives and and, and solution. Uh, it was amazing, and 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 this this show show us that uh, the the most skills that women show up is uh, fast reaction and uh, really high uh, huge willing to be part of the action. So uh, that's why uh, I, I I do see women in the clean tech uh, and the, the empowering women in the clean tech. Uh, it's, it, this will be uh, more powerful uh, because uh, women they have this especially the skills is uh, uh, acting so uh, so which is which is will, will bring also uh, uh, a lot of progress in the all this green tech project and and businesses uh, so thank you very much uh, to be part of the panelists and uh, i hope i wish you also good continuation and good uh, good session so this was my part thank you very much Thank you, Zainab. Thank you so much. And I can see a request from Giani as well that he needs to leave in the next five minutes. All right. Uh, so then again, we remain on equality. <laughs> the panel is not unequal anymore then. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Giani, for being with us and giving us such a wonderful insight on women empowerment and your views. It was lovely hosting you here. With this, I move on to... Thank With you this, all. I move on bye. to bye-bye. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I move to Gemma. Uh, Gemma, uh, you have to answer this question on what does uh, the pandemic reveal to you about women empowerment? And we start another question from you, which is why do you think that women are lacking in clean tech business? Is it because of the job security issue is, or is it because of the pay scale? or the travel walls, or the sites being very far off, you have to give me some ideas on that. Sure, oh, so okay, just yeah. on your last question, you're Over asking you. why, why there aren't many women in clean tech? Just to Gemma, clarify. we cannot hear you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, now it's okay. Oh, great. Um, just to clarify, your second question is why are there not that many women working in clean tech? Yes. Got it. That's so correct. I think the, um, in, in many respects, the, the um, uh, working from home situation that has become very widespread as a result of, um, you know, response to the virus, I think has been a great levelizer. Um, you know, I've been on so many video conference calls with people at home with their children, and uh, you know, you can't disguise them, <laughs> and it's become a very normal phenomena um, that you know your kids are around. And I think that you know, in the past, I think women have felt like they had to pretend like that they, they their kids don't exist, and um, that you know t that they have to present a certain persona that that you know that they're kind of that aspect of their life is nothing to do with their career or their profession. And sometimes it's really hard to, to, to do that, to pretend. Um, so I think that there's been a greater normalization and also acceptance of this. And it's kind of built, uh, built rapport, I think, and a greater sense of um, uh, a common understanding of what our lives actually look like. And um, I, I think that that overall is a very positive thing. I think in terms of the other aspects of the adapting that's going on, you know, apart from handing out, you know, Zoom licenses and virtual private networks, I think companies need to raise their skills. I think we need to think of things like remote working as a skill set in and of itself. For example, you know, how could you facilitate a design session online and still get the same level of participation and product output as when done on a whiteboard in, in a room when everyone's sitting around chatting amongst themselves or, you know, how could you readily reach an agreement from speaking with a client online who may themselves be in a different location to some of their colleagues dialing in remotely. And I think there are people who are very good at facilitating these kinds of conversations and managing teams and being managed remotely. And I think that women are, a lend, the skills of women lend themselves to be to being good at this. So I, I see actually quite a number of opportunities for women in this changing kind of 
um, dynamic. And I think these people and those skills are going to become increasingly valuable in the organisations of the future. And, you know, that, that there'll, there'll be a that need to be a greater focus on you know, quality and precision and productivity. So um, I think that, you know, the, there are many opportunities that exist in this crisis if only we look to, to find them. And in response to women in um, clean tech, uh, I, maybe it's because they haven't yet discovered how cool it is and awesome it is. <laughs> <laughs> and ho okay. hopefully, you know, conversations like this would, you know, uh, highlight that. But I, I find it a super exciting space to work in. And I, I think that it, it is actually, you know, it, there, there is a lot of opportunity in terms of, you know, projects, technical skills, programming, coding, and, you know, um, you know, financing. So, you know, it's, there's a lot of depth and breadth to it in terms of different ways that you can come at it. And, and I think that, that the, the lack of travel right now, I think, may, means also that, you know, perhaps people that wouldn't want to travel um, as much at, at the particular point in life that they're at, perhaps if they've got a lot of small, you know, small children, um, could contemplate um, a career in this field and there might be, it might become more normal to travel less and find other ways to connect with potential clients and counterparties and do projects together. So, Welcome um, to the Clean uh, Tech Club, you know. Sorry? <laughs> Welcome to the Clean Tech Club. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so that's the answer to my to your questions. I, thank you, Rashi. All right, thank you. Um, before I jump in to anyone else for this, there's a very interesting question that has come up from the audience, and he says that women need. The question is, a woman needs access to education for the leadership position. We have very good leaders and highly educated female leaders, but does your sector attract talent? Do we have the right mix of opportunities, compensation, and recognition to match their expectations or attract talent compared to IT or any other sector? So with this, uh, I would first like Gaurav Mehta ji to answer this. So I think uh, this really depends. Uh, it's very hard to answer, Rashi, because it depends <laughs> on the level, right, of, of what part of the space we're looking at. I think the clean tech space is so diverse or solar space also is so diverse that you kind of have uh, probably a mix and match of from a social sector perspective, non-profits to for-profits to, uh, and within those again, or social enterprises, hybrids. So I think surely there's enough opportunity uh, across these spaces for different kind of in terms of flavors from a perspective of compensation opportunity and uh, et cetera. Whether I think from my perspective, the talent, pools available for organizations such as ours over the over time who are working in the social enterprise or hybrid space has dramatically increased over the years for women I and mean, the gender ratio also have increased. Obviously it's still, I mean, this is not uh, like a complaint. I think it's up to us, uh, I mean, to get, uh, to have suitable job roles which align and are gender neutral, right? But I mean, the, the gender ratio is still um, for some areas difficult. For most areas, we have been able to balance it. I think from our perspective, the field level is, is inversely balanced, the, the kind of on the village level, but on the district and traveling level, it's in, I mean, it's negative. I mean, I more male, but at the head office level, we have been, it's been better from a balancing perspective. But I hope that you know, as an attempt to answer the question, it's a very difficult uh, question to actually. Yeah, um, yes, uh, it is a difficult question. To, so I can only qualify my answer with my personal experience. <laughs> All right. Yes, Mary. Okay, thank you for, for recognizing me. I think for me personally, and what I've seen in the world, it's, it's not education for women. It's the financial opportunities. As a woman, the banks don't treat us equally. And it's not just a little bit, it's a whole bunch different. And when, you, when I've approached that to women, they say, no, 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 we have this vice versa women. Yeah, because you pay them less. So let's not kid one another. No, the real problem is that the money is not as accessible to women as to men. That's a very hardcore basic problem and nobody can tell me otherwise because I've had too much personal experience. 
So the point is now, what do we do about it? You know, this is like any other kind of new industry technology. The federal governments have so much power over this. So just like when the, uh, they got, the banks got caught redlining all the black areas and all that stuff, it's the same kind of thing. So the banks there are the federal government can do one of a, a, a couple of things. First of all, they can do a minimum set aside, like if out of so many of your loans, and even if it's as small as 10% must go to women business operators, owners. Now, can you imagine what an input that would be? And it's not like women don't pay. When they did those, they, it was just done by a group of uh, Harvard college kids that did those, originally started those micro loans in Africa. And guess what? They had like a 95% rate payback rate. I mean, it was enormously successful. It's the same thing. We as women as a whole do not go out of business in the same proportionate level as men. Come on, get onto it. Why don't they recognize that? Why don't they see it? So anyway, so there's one thing they can do minimums. So that's number one. And, but the second thing is the federal government could reward the banks by giving it. So I know they get special bonuses for this and that and for something else. Give them a, on, the, on the pay scale of how well your, comp, your, business, your bank is rated by how many women's uh, biz, small business loans you get. I mean, it, it's so easy. But so while we're having this conversation, I'm thinking, you know, what could I do? I'm going to call, um, what's her name? You know, the, the secretary of, uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, come on, I'm having an old lady brain freeze. So <laughs> I'll I'll <laughs> oh, it's not just me, I'm so happy no, to hear it's... that. <laughs> It's everybody's because of overload, memory overload of our brains. <laughs> so anyway, Pelosi is her name. Now that, it, uh, you know. Okay, Nancy so Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I mean, how difficult was that to come up with? How difficult was that to come up with? Anyway, <laughs> speak of the house. I'm going to call her office and suggest to her that this is something that's a really important issue that it affects so many, so many people. It's not like we're a minor, much of a minority because I think the last thing, I think there's more women than there are men. So, I mean, come on, someone just has to get on it and do that. Now, it's very unfortunate for me that Joe Mobley, who is the uh, chairman of the uh, Ways and Means, uh, which meant every piece of legislation had to cross by his desk, who was yeah. a dear friend of mine, uh, passed away which was, I've never felt safe since that happened. But anyway, so I'm gonna pick up the phone. That's what I'm gonna try. Cause it's one thing okay, to have so, an idea, but it's number two is it's something, if you don't put your ideas into action, you're nowhere. So now true. Solar Mom is gonna keep quiet because believe it or not, I've been chasing the governor for mm -hmm. about a month now. And I have a call with him in five minutes. Oh. All right. <laughs> so I'm which, gonna be here five minutes governor? and then I'm gonna decide. Which, which, governor? which governor, Mary? Oh, of Massachusetts. Oh, ah, um, good luck. Callie go Baker. go Callie for it. Baker. All the best. It's, it, it's yes. all about this whole my new uh, my new clean technology. Yeah. So yeah. he he's in he's in this dream team with all the New England governors uh, about global warming. So I'm presenting to them uh, because this has such a huge impact with how much carbon it can sequest. Yes. So thank you, thank you, thank awesome, you. Awesome, Mama. Thank you for being with us. Oh, thank you. And before I got off, I just thank want to. Give, mama. Oh, honey, I just want to say thank you to you, Thomas. Now you are a man, and we're going to forgive you for that. It's okay. <laughs> what a brilliant! What a brilliant! I, I was eat, eating some chicken. I didn't know that the camera is on. <laughs> ah, that's okay. You no, know, I just want to give. I just want to uh, give credit where credit's due. It's because of you that you're banning everyone together to be united through these very difficult times. And I just want to say how much I love you and I respect you. And I want to thank you for what you do yes. for all of us, men and women. So let's hear it for Tomas. Okay. So, I'm a big fan awesome. of yours, Tomas. And thank, thank you all for having me. Hey, and thank you for recognizing senior citizens. I appreciate you for doing that. <laughs> so it's all good. <laughs> Tell us, I want to come back and go on the call with Tony Siva. So how, how do I do that? Just go back. Uh, to that's, that's later on, Mama. We can have that on the WhatsApp, all right? Okay, cool. thank you. Thank you. Yeah.
Bye, kids. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Bye. -bye. So we now move into well, continuing this discussion. Uh, I'd like to ask Tarleen on uh, there are many things happening in India on this on the women empowerment front where there are a lot of uh, schemes. And uh, we have seen the microfinance and the repayments being very nice from India. So could you just highlight on that as well? Um, I actually think Gaurav is probably a much better uh, uh, person to speak on the microfinance schemes. Uh, but certainly the government has found that repayment of loans has been higher than what was expected. And they were planning on doing a lot more with loan forgiveness. Um, and companies have benefited across the board uh, from repayments. Um, and I can speculate that with microfinance is very likely because it is you know, in India, microfinance is, is very much focused around groups of women coming together. But um, I think that Gaurav's business probably touches on microfinance a lot more than my work does. Would you like to comment? Yeah, sure. I mean, I think from what we've seen, it's, I mean, we had to support our uh, member base, uh, our, our, our entrepreneurs, and give them more time. Given the lockdown, also it's been difficult. But no, I think I expect it's too early to say. But so far, default rates have been. I think I would er echo that point. I don't. I've not seen the data yet. Uh, it's too early, right? But from whatever data we have, it's not negative. Uh, so it's good. So. Awesome. So how about Charlie? What do you have to say about situation in Africa? Is it similar to India or any other developing country? Mm, uh, even though even though we recognize that india is uh, a democracy uh, i've seen so many similarities you know between india and africa when i get uh, to new delhi to meet my friends i dr gopal energy foundation so i think uh, 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 for me one of the key things we need to do uh, uh, going from now, from this COVID time, COVID-19 time, is that we need to change our paradigm. Because there are so many structural impediments, you know, in women empowerment that we can not just be taking decisions as we have been doing so far. We need to change. If we don't, if we don't build the system structurally, rebuild the system, take the advantage of this COVID-19 to rebuild the system. It's clear that we can not just be, you know, using these ad hoc interventions, you know, uh, uh, ad hoc intervention strategy. We need a transformational programmatic approach to give power, to give more power to women and to bring kind of equality. Because as it goes, we can't breach equality the way it is designed, the way the system is designed now. And if we want to do this, we need to decide to create kind of imbalance in the decision we take now so that we can give, you know, political empowerment to women, something that doesn't really, doesn't really exist in Africa. Most policy makers are men. And so it is just normal that most decisions will favor men. That, that just, that's just logical. And then we need from there, making sure that women are really, really counted as policy makers. We can now infer that probably, you know, social empowerment will certainly derive from that. That's normal. And they will be building policies to protect themselves, you know, from bias, from oppressions, and from so many kind of violence that we've seen, that we've seen being emerging this COVID-19 time. And, you know, news are, f are full of experiences, of negative, dramatic experiences facing, faced by women at this, at this very moment, all over the world, in almost every country. Now we have, we have news about what women are, uh, are, are facing now, and it's just dramatic. And then we need economic empowerment. And that will only come if we really change the, you know, if we, we keep a kind of, or maybe if we design a gender lens in the way we distribute and we share dollars, millions of dollars that exist in the energy sector. We need this now. If we don't change the way we distribute and share those resources, 
it's impossible to 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 get to see women tomorrow that will be so many so many women leaders in the energy sector and i think energy sector is actually a very good space this clean tech business is a very good space where we can really really build on the novelty and you know human beings they love what is new so let's take the advantage of this awesome that was fantastic okay uh, the next uh, i would like to move on to what are the key actions that we need to maximize women's contribution to accelerating the energy transformation and how do we move out of this covid-19 pandemic so first ik and then stalin huh. uh, how to move out of the covid-19 pan pandemic is very hard to predict i think we will see <laughs> in the next couple of weeks when countries are loosening up the restrictions of uh, going out uh, shopping and so on whether there is ever any second wave as it has been threatened so many times but maybe it will not happen so maybe we are lucky that in fall life starts to come back to very more normal times but i think it will take long to we are getting uh, there all together to the first part of the question rashi uh, what can we concrete do i think the first step is really each time we uh, elect a leadership we form a body we should look around where are the women in this body because i have experienced myself that we had some grouping and we said okay this and this and this person and suddenly one noticed and sometimes too late wow there is not a single woman in this body so i think it should be socially unacceptable to have any leadership body without it doesn't have to be 50 50 you know but the female element in any leadership body makes a big difference and it should be simply like it's not longer acceptable to take out cigarettes when you are visiting a person at home and start to smoke this is not forbidden it's not acceptable and similarly it should not be acceptable to have important bodies with too few women i'm not saying it has to be a 50% but having 10 people uh, in a body then it should be at least 3 4 women to make it not socially unacceptable i think this is really the way we should treat this not with a rule and law but simply making people ridiculous if they take a photo and it's all men you know it still happens sometimes i must tell you yeah i know and you are surprised <laughs> what kind of bodies uh, bodies of clean tech and whatever and still it's all men and this simply should not longer be acceptable it should be ridiculed and should put it in the internet and say look these guys you know they say they are the members of the board of this and this organization and where is the, where is the, is the female representation so this might be a a way to really what makes or any organization stronger with women participation in the leadership awesome So moving on to Stalin. Well, so I would definitely agree with Ike's comments. Um, one thing I would really think to do, you know, is as we're moving forward to really think about encouraging more women to join the sector. There's a lot of talented women that are very interested in the topic of climate, clean tech, energy, but they don't necessarily always see where the opportunities for them are. um a lot of times they think everything is very technical and because they're well past their education and they don't have the technical background they don't think there's a space for them um and i know that's one of the things that we really actively work to do in the clean tech women's innovation network you know we want to embrace women that have the technical background encourage women with technical backgrounds to consider the sector but also make it available to women who are coming from different backgrounds whether that be finance operations marketing communications because i think these are all skill sets that are very important if we have more people who who have strong financial skills maybe more women led businesses will be able to access capital if we have more stronger communications maybe businesses across the board are going to get their message out better um and women are very well known very strong communicators it's not to say that men aren't um, 
<laughs> very often take that leadership role within communities or within companies where we see them excelling in other sectors of society. Um, and then the other thing I would say is when we see women who are in leadership roles and as women in leadership roles, and I, I, I'm encouraging this to the other women on the panel, it, try to make yourself available to mentor. Uh, when people ask you, speak on a panel, be a mentor, don't say, oh, I don't know if I can, because I, I hear brilliant women, experienced women, talented women all the time say, I don't know if I can. And then I have kids that are like 22 years old come up to me and, and introduce themselves as like experts and tell me that they're going to be the mentors and they're going to be the, you know, and you don't see that as much with women. Um, but give the women who are in your networks the, the, the bandwidth, the encouragement, the courage to go and do that because when you do, they do it and they find the results are very, uh, you know, positive. Um, so th those would be the things I would say, you know, I, I don't know what, when this is going to end or, or, or how it's going to end or, or in terms of COVID, but I think that there's a lot we can be doing now and a lot we can do as that happens to really uh, start shaping the world to be what we want it to be or more of what we want it to be. Awesome. Let's go to Kelly. Yeah. Well, what I believe um, is actually that even the woman here on the panel, we have to believe in the power that we have. Uh, we are powerful women here and uh, we want to give direction to clean tech and we just have to keep on doing that and trusting that we're doing it the uh, right way. Uh, and that is actually leading by example, uh, I would say. Great, Kelly. Good to hear that. Let's go to Paulette. Uh, I really underscore all of the comments that have just been made, leading by example, uh, mentoring, uh, mentoring not only our, our peers and, and young professionals coming up, but also taking advantage of the opportunity of going into schools, uh, talking to young women who need some role models and everyone here and, and I'm sure many people who are listening in to this make excellent role models. So I would, I would say that's another thing. And then I would like to uh, then also follow up on uh, Ike's comment about uh, bringing more women into leadership positions, for example. I think that actually it would be great if every, every company that's going out to hire or any board that's trying to get new members, wherever, that you strive to have at least 50% of your candidates be women and hopefully have 50% in the leadership exactly. positions as well. Exactly. All right, great. Let's go to Simei. I would like to just highlight uh, one concept, like we're actually um, green collar women in this industry. And we are, we are not accidentally here. Uh, we are not doing, we are not doing the things we are doing accidentally. You know, like we, uh, we have targets. We are have ideals. Um, so like, um, we know we we actually care uh, sustainable grain future. So that's why we are here and with our own initiatives. So like, uh, I just want to highlight the, the importance of being united. You know, like. Um, whatever role we have in our organizations, uh, we just need to cooperate with the other people or other women in our organizations and with the other women organizations or other um, associations uh, that who cares also the same uh, values of, of our industry. And uh, we need to believe ourselves. We need to believe in the others uh, in our um, so society and in our um associations, then we need to support, as all, all mentioned and highlighted, we need to support the mentorship programs, we need to create visibility uh, and give recognition to women who really deserve it and encourage each other. It's, it's actually the tool. Uh, we need to, we, we shouldn't hesitate to share knowledge and uh, give more support to each other here in this field. I mean, both men and women mm -hmm. together we're stronger and we need to just keep going 
uh, keep it, keep up the good work what we are doing in our fields. Awesome. Let's hear from Gemma. Uh, did you? This is the same question you put to me before, which is how do we get more women in clean tech? Okay, I mean, uh, so I th I think if you if you look at like programming, like computer programming is a kind of point of comparison. The earliest programmers were actually yes. women, yes. and in the seventies, yes. um, the archetype around the male geeky coder became like was really pushed as a kind of identity and. I think as a result of that, women couldn't see themselves in that profession anymore and it was seen as a male's domain. Um, I don't think that we have that going on in energy to the same extent, but clearly, obviously, there, there is an element of that. But um, that I, I think that, that, that raising the profile of women working in this space is really important for other people to see, oh, this is a place for women and to relate to um, a, as a field for them. I know it sounds kind of, kind of obvious, but you know, these kinds of conversations and, and really you know, drawing out the profile of women that are working in this space is really important for, um, for university graduates to, to, you know, to notice and, and start to think, hey, there might be a place for me there. Okay, let's go to Mr. Mehta. So from a rural perspective, what we have to do, uh, because we were initially male dominated, was actually to work with the families as well. So we had to change perception at the, at the family level when we got to women, women involved, because unfortunately, I mean, the, the stereotypes and um, kind of the, the barriers were driven by the rest of the family. So we had to address that. Once we addressed that and got the families buy-in, and uh, usually then, it, I mean, in the clean energy role we, uh, we created, uh, the family gained respect, the woman gained respect, and therefore the family gained respect in the village. So that then reinforced it itself. And when we now recruit newer women entrepreneurs, we try to take those women entrepreneurs along who are successful and known. So that's, the, that's unfortunately, it's a two-step behavior change. I mean, obviously, again, we're talking about different levels and geographies and, and uh, positions, right? But if I look at the grassroots position, this is one of the things. We, have, we did and uh, which helped. Uh, yeah. Then whenever we do the family, I mean, now we don't do it without family engagement because otherwise what happens is you actually create more problems, unfortunately, for the women a lot of times. And that's, it's a risk which, uh, you know, which you want to avoid. I mean, it's sad that I have to say it that, that way. I wish it wouldn't be that way, but this is the way we had to find uh, to address this. Uh, and now when, obviously- All right, yeah, let's hear from the, the let's, thank you. Let's hear from Mr. Pranav Mehta. Mr. Pranav Mehta, are you there? Maybe not. Maybe I think he's not there. All right, Thomas. Um, so what do you have to say about it? Thomas, you are, on you mute. are mute. <laughs> <laughs> but it looks positive. <laughs> yeah. I think I think about the boss, you know, so why, why I choose uh, you as a leader that I need to make some work, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but I think that uh, that uh, the our cooperation of this e convention showed that uh, it's uh, amazing yeah, to work between women and and the men. Yes, so it's not questionable. And uh, I think uh, what we can do, <laughs> we can just share our DNA to other people. Yes, and to show guys, we are always fifty fifty. Yeah? We don't need to show that. Uh, there is less woman, uh, women, uh, more men, etc. We are just equal, yes. So we are just working together, and uh, uh, we are promoting clean tech, uh, clean energy to everybody. And then, uh, of course, uh, if there is more more women, it's better for us. Yes? Because, uh, like I, I think in India, he said that he was uh, employing women because he got better business. Yes. Oh yeah. This. Yunus, Yunus has started the whole microcredit. Exclusively with women, ninety-seven percent of uh, uh, of uh, loans at Graman was uh, yes for women. Sorry, my voice is not so good now. <laughs> Three days of speaking. All right. No, but, but I'm was... really happy that uh, the trashy that you organized uh, everything and uh, I know that uh, uh, when, for example, we are in charge of something, is always 
executed uh, very well. Yes, it's very perfectly. 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 <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you, all my esteemed uh, panelists here, to give all such wonderful opinions about uh, what they think of uh, women empowerment. I would just like to say that energy sector will be seeing a very major transformational change from 2021 and women will be at the core of it. 